Yeah. Title says it all. I'm going to preface. I'll look up and I'll put the date here on the screen when I bought it. And it wasn't that long ago. So we're in coming up on April 2024. And I have to say it's at least two years old and it's sat for probably collectively almost a full year that it wasn't used. And to be, you know, somewhat, you know, ballparky ish for board foot that I've put through this thing, maybe a hundred lineal board feet. That's that's pushing it because most of the stuff I process is boards for nice scales. And so the boards are already pretty good. They're not super rough sawn. They're not, you know, cut with a chainsaw out of the yard kind of wood. It's usually pretty good wood. It's wood that I've bought from places like Bell Forest up in Ishpeming, Michigan. They send you really nice wood. And the only reason why I'm sanding it is because I cut it up, I send it to the processor to get stabilized, and then I sand it down afterwards. And I use like an 80 grit belt. I'm not using a 220 where it gets gummed up and gets bound. And I think I've only used three different belts. Matter of fact, I think I've only used up one belt completely, and that was probably a 120. I've got boxes of belts, the drum belts for this thing. Let me put you down and show you what I'm dealing with. Well, yeah, I am, I am literally like up to here with this thing. So I'll have to do a link. The last video I did on this wasn't very old. I think maybe it came out December, January-ish, 2023, 2024, right in there. And what ended up happening is, as I was operating this, the motor would be going, but the drive belt stopped spinning. <laughs> I took it apart and found out that the shaft, this little key <laughs> that screws, it inserts in this and there's two set screws that screw down into it. That snapped. Uh, it was about a quarter inch long, or a quarter inch diameter, and maybe an inch and a half, two inches, maybe inch and a half long, something like that. And I couldn't get the new shaft. They had to send me an entire motor. Um, yeah, this is, it's already warm. Um, they send me a new motor. Then um, it still wouldn't work. Then I went through fighting with them about what well, fighting. I went through debating about whether or not the control board or the motor was bad and stuff. And, and I says, well, it, it, I mean, you could plug it in, <clears throat> nothing's going. There's no power going to it. So how would it be a motor? There's, there's, I mean, there's, there was nothing. It's not like you turn it on, you can feel anything. And I didn't have a tester at a time, but. They sent me a new control board. It took about another month. I got the control board, we put it in, rewired it, and, and everything was working. I literally have been in here, and the only things I'm working on are these three pieces of trim. This is some old oak that I had in my bathroom, <laughs> and it's starting to get a little bit of a cup to it. <laughs> and so, uh, I took it off, I pulled the nails. Uh, there was like some construction caulk or something at the end of it. You know, it, it's people just do stuff their house just to sell it. So I peeled it off, I cleaned it. I started using my hand, my, my palm sander, the orbital sander, my Milwaukee there. And uh, I got it started, but I said, you know what? Let me pull this thing out. It's going, it's running. Um, I can run it through and I can smooth out the wood. I can smooth this wood out and I can take the crown because if you guys don't know, when you, the wood's got grain and crown and this trim was made with the outside of the wood, outside of the tree, not the inside closer to the heart. So if you look at it and you look at a tree and there's, it's, you know, you got the, the growth rings like this. When you cut it, you'll see those rings are kind of cupped one or the other. They'll be cupped like this because this was the center of the tree or it's like this. 
Well, <clears throat> when they did the trim, when they made this trim, they didn't make this trim with the cup facing inwards to the wall, this being the face of the trim. They made this the face and the grains like this. So they milled it with the face like this. Well, as wood dries, it'll follow that cup. It'll follow the curve of that ring. So when you see a curve, and say for instance, as you might be looking at this, the curve is pointing down, meaning it's like smiling like this. It's got a curve like this. The wood wants to cup like that. Now, if they made the trim the other way, the wood would cup like this against the wall and uh, it might, it wouldn't like really lift off the wall a little bit, but they didn't do that. So I'm trying to take the crown out of it by smoothing this out. I did this piece and I did this piece. I started trying to do this piece and this thing's stopping. Now, it's not the shaft, it's not broken, that keyway, because it will spin every now and then. But as I start to feed material through here, and I do have a vacuum on it, now, I, you know, I'll show you an example of it, I won't run the vacuum, it's really loud, but uh, I had the shop vac done, so I'm not getting wood, like sawdust, jammed up inside the machine. Uh, I blew it clean, everything was good again. Um, since we reassembled it, we ran just a couple of pieces of wood through it. Um, I don't even know if we have it here or not. I think we, we just had like a, like a couple pieces of two by four. And we just ran some two by four through it just to make sure that everything was going good, and it was. But we only ran it like four or five passes, six passes at best with two by four, and that's it. Shut it off, put it under the bench, called it good, haven't run it since. Months later, I go to pull it out. I'm like, hey, I'll use this. So literally, it's just reassembled. We ran some two by fours through it, like small pieces of two by four, just running them through it, maybe like two by threes or something, just to run it through to get it going. Everything was good there. Put it away, it's been sitting there for months. Pull it out to do this. I'm not even through two pieces of trim. And now, as I start to feed the other piece through, it starts to pause. The belt is pausing and the shaft is not spinning the belt. Well, the shaft isn't broke because it does start and it does turn the belt and it starts to go. And then it stops and then it goes and it pauses and it's starting to pause. And so you have to like turn the belt or push the material to, to feed it all the way through. And you don't want that to happen because if the material pauses inside there, then you get a little bit of like a, a groove. You get like a cup that's been sanded into the material. You don't want that. Um, I've been playing around with it before I pulled the camera out. This isn't even my intended video for today. Um, I was actually coming out, I was just doing some of these little chores real quick, and then I had a whole different video I was gonna do. And I have been monkeying around. <laughs> I got dust, I get the sawdust my hands. I've been monkeying around with this for a better part of an hour, playing with the tension on the belt, loosening it up completely, trying to tighten it with these little set screws that they have here and everything. And as soon as you just tighten it a little bit, just a little bit, even without material, you turn it on, it'll spin, it'll stop, it'll spin, it'll stop. So at this point, I'm, I'm literally It's stuff like this, and I had to do this video to tell you guys, I am really regretting buying this 1020. Um, and I'm gonna have to say, and now I would say if you were, if I was really abusive on my tools, and I'd had this for years, and I've been using it crazily, running boards to build tables and stuff, and furniture and everything, I would say yes, it's my fault. But I literally, I bet you I don't even have close to 100 lineal feet through this thing. That's pushing it. I'd probably be closer to like 30 or 40 lineal feet, but I don't measure it. You don't measure and keep track of that kind of stuff. And granted, this thing literally has not been used in a collective 12 or 14 month period of time because I don't go to it that often. Once I've processed my scales and some wooden stuff, it sits underneath the bench for months. And I can't say that, oh, hey, you know, um, you know, buy American because this was Chinese or is that it's made in China. The whole thing, the companies, it's supposed to be, you know, it's not everything. It's made in Taiwan and, and this is made in Taiwan. This is made in Taiwan. I think the body itself might have been made in Taiwan or maybe it's China. I don't know if it has anything written on it underneath here. Right now, I have a really big paperweight, 
and I don't I don't really plan on doing much more to it. I am going to putz with it a little bit, uh, but um, really disappointed. I just wanted to do this quick video on this that don't buy one. This is I'm very disappointed in this Jet 1020. Very very disappointed in it. Um, this is a big purchase. This was a big investment for the company and uh, to have this many problems with it and have this many struggles for as little as I've used it, again, don't buy it. And that's what this video is about. I'm not going to go into all the details of what I was doing and stuff like that. I know there's set screws here. I play with those set screws and it's not the sawdust. I got a vacuum going. I was actually blowing it out a little bit. That's why I've got <laughs> sawdust on me and everything. But in a nutshell, don't buy a Jet 1020 drum sander. Don't do it. Go to Wen, go to DeWalt, go to whoever else. Look theirs up. Don't do a Jet 1020 bandsaw. That's it's it in a nutshell. This this is the 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 tool part of uh, the company, and yeah. So don't do it. I would not recommend this for anybody. No. If Jet ever sees this, if anybody shares it with Jet, you know what? You can send me another one. I'll. I'll put them side by side. I'll play with it, I'll try it, I'll do whatever, but I will not buy and I will not endorse this at all. I am so upset with this and disappointed at the same time. So don't do it. That should be the title, just it might be. Don't buy a Jet 1020 bandsaw. Uh, but that's it, King. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna clean up. I'm, I don't even know if I'm gonna play with this anymore. I might just put it back underneath the bench and let it sit for a few months until maybe I am a little bit more calm about this decision. Um, I'll get this trim put in and I'm gonna go doing something else. Uh, but yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Nothing fancy, nothing humorous, nothing jovial like normal. Um, don't buy a Jet 1020 band, uh, drum sander. That's it. So you guys have a good one. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Keep me from the bottom YouTube bucket. You know the old saying goes. Uh, welcome to all the new folks on board. I do appreciate it. Um, and um, yeah, I'm gonna clean up and I'm gonna maybe film that other video. So you guys take care.